Hello, my art-loving friends. I am Deborah Kay, and I welcome you to Paint with a Passion. Today, we are leafing on a sunny afternoon in the summertime. Okay, all right, she's singing already. Let's try this again. Today, we're going to paint this beautiful rustic autumn leaf. It's super easy and super fun. Here is my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together and let's go make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. I am painting on a six by eight inch press board and you can use anything you want as your canvas. It can be bigger, smaller, round, square, wood, stone, canvas, whatever you like. I like to use the press boards when I'm practicing or when I want to save money instead of using wood or canvas. You can get these in bulk cheap. And once you've painted uh, the entire thing, including the back and then varnish the whole thing, you don't even know that it's a press board. When painting on anything porous, I recommend that you always use a gesso primer. If you use a canvas, you can get them pre-primed or you can prime your own. Just remember to prime all the surface areas you are going to paint. And the bigger the area, the bigger the brush, and a little bit of gesso goes a long way. We are going to use a technique called stippling to create the leaf's background. Say it with me now, stippling, 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 stippling. Hey, hun, what you doing? Not now, dear, I'm stippling. <laughs> I know, I'm repeating old jokes, but it's funny every single time. You want to use a palette that allows enough room to add three nice size pools of paint right next to each other. So I just use an old plastic container lid. Start with a small amount of paint and then add more if you need it. Remember, a little goes a long way, and you really can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, if you know what I mean. You can buy stippling brushes, but personally, I find I get better results with a wide, semi-flat makeup brush. Let the stippling begin! So, dip your brush down into the paint. Make sure it gets all three colors on it, and then lightly dab straight up and down all around the canvas. And be careful not to apply too much pressure because this will cause your paint to overblend into a murky mess. If this happens, just give it a few minutes to dry and start again. And if you don't like how a spot came out, just come back to it and dab right over it again. Try to line up the brush so that you reload the colors in the same area on the brush each time. Okay, so moving right along. Line up your large stencil and trace a vertical line down the center of the canvas and leave a little space at the top and at the bottom. Then decide where you want the bottom of your leaf to start and how long you want your stem to be. And then decide the shape you want for your leaf and add the veins. And the veins are going to be your guide for drawing your leaf segments. Now we'll draw in new vein lines before we actually paint the design on the leaf. So these are only temporary guidelines to help you form the shape. Once you have your leaf drawn in, we are going to fill in the background with black. I'm using an angled brush because it works great on the curves while maximizing coverage. I definitely don't want to try to fill in the entire background using a fine lining brush, that's for sure.
And just like that, Houston, we have a leaf. I repeat, we have a leaf. How amazing is this? Now that our leaf is defined, let's erase all the chalk marks and draw in new veins because the vein junction now is not in the right place. Does that even make sense? Well, I think it does and I'm going with it. The junction for the vein should be at the base of the leaf and then the vein should sprout out from that base and end at the tip of each segment. Let's start on the leaf design. Um, find something round that's roughly an inch wide. A coin or a paint bottle lid would work nicely. And then center it over your junction marker and trace a semicircle around it. And then we are going to build our design off of this. Start with a row of petals and then add three rows of small arches over each petal. So, yeah. My camera was off when I drew the rest of the design. I took a quick break and I didn't turn it back on. Arr! Look who decided to join us today. My little painting buddy. My snarf snarf. So, no worries. I will just show you on paper and actually it's probably easier to see uh, the design anyways. I'm drawing a quick mock-up leaf and I start with an upside down chicken foot and then I add two horizontal lines, one on the right and one on the left, and then just add a stem. Drawing this style of leaf is very similar to drawing holly. Just keep drawing outward curves all around the veins and then redraw the veins in so they start at the joint and end at the tip of each segment. I used two designs to fill in the leaf sections and just kept repeating. One looks like a basket weave and the other is wavy lines with some random sized dots. I didn't fill in the whole leaf here and I didn't even add the petals uh, that I began with, but I think you get the idea. Feel free to pause the video and zoom in to take a look at the actual design on the canvas. Now we are going to use our fine lining brushes to paint in our design. The fine lining brush I'm using is custom made and I have several that I use. Um, some are curved, some are straight. And you can watch my video to learn how to create your own super skinny fine lining brushes. This summer is extremely hot and so muggy and it's making my paint dry very, very fast. So I recommend you pour small amounts of paint so that it doesn't dry out. And I find these little pocket palettes to be super handy. So use one pocket of paint up, take a break if you need it, load up the next one and keep on a painting. Don't rush, take your time. Make sure not to apply too much pressure on the brush so that you can keep the lines real thin. If you need to reload in the middle of painting a line, always start a little way back from where you left off. And this way you won't create a break or a junction spot uh, in your line. Be nice and smooth transition.
white. So now is a great time to erase all of the chalk lines before we add our dots. And I personally like to use these white erasers that don't leave any skid marks because, well, skid marks, enough said, right? Let's clean up the veins and then join them all together with a center dot. Let's go ahead and use the same tool to add some random dots along the wavy line patterns. Make sure to spread them out and we don't want to add too many. Now, using the largest of the small dotting tools, add a variety of uh, different size dots and again just try not to add too many. One of the most important tips I can give you about using your dotting tools is to make sure you wipe them off often and also pour fresh paint as needed. Using our super skinny fine lining brush, let's outline the leaf. Now I chose metallic copper because it has a bit of an orange hue and it really complements the leaf colors. And remember, when you reload your brush, always make sure to continue a little ways back from where you left off so you don't have a noticeable junction. So I've made a bunch of fine lining brushes and they range from as thin as a pin to the width of a pencil and some are curved and some are straight and they all work great on different things. I just pick those small round brushes that I never seem to use and I turn them into a custom fine lining brush and you know what? They work better than any fine lining brush I've ever bought. Okay, so let's also add some itty bitty black strips to the petals using the smallest brush you have or even one of your skinny fine lining brushes. To make the dots really stand out, let's top them with some metallic copper. Make sure the copper dot doesn't completely cover the black dot. And this is really going to make that leaf outline pop. Also, add a little strip of copper to the petal strips. And you can use a skinny brush for that or the very smallest, finest dotting tool tip that you have. I think the center dot needs to be a little bit bigger and that's better. And once that's dry, let's add a copper top dot. Using a small round bristle brush, we are gonna wisp metallic streaks onto the background. The trick is to use a dry brush and add just the smallest amount of paint to the tip of the brush. Then blot it off and barely touch the canvas as you wisp in little short strokes back and forth. If you apply too much in one area, just wait for it to dry and wisp on some black paint with a clean brush. Get close to the leaf, but try not to butt up against it because the gap between the green background and the leaf gives the illusion that the leaf is almost floating in the background.
And don't forget to sign your work. A lot of times I'll sign mine after I varnished just because the paint flows easier. So whichever way you want to do it. Look at this. How amazing does this look? I mean, wow. All right, let's add some varnish. I'm using DuraClear with a small sponge paint roller. It is hands down the best way to apply varnish to flat paintings. Obviously, it doesn't work for bottles and rocks, and it might even be silly to try to use it on something small like an ornament. But for this piece, it works perfectly. And once the varnish is dry, get out your finest pin size fine linen brush and let's add a little bit of copper to the veins to make them look less severe, a little more rustic. And I'm not making perfect solid lines here, I'm just kind of skipping along. Now I'm doing this over the first coat of varnish because if I need to erase any of the metallic, it easily wipes off. And it's also easier to do the super fine pin work over the varnish. And now to rusticize the stem. Is that a word? Rusticize? Well, it is now, and I'm going with it. Anyways, using the pin tip fine lining brush, I'm adding just the tiniest amount of black, and then I'm going to ever so lightly smudge it with a cotton swab. Now that the highlights are dry, let's add the final coat of varnish. Check for any missed areas and then make sure that you submerge your sponge in water or wash it off right away. Voila! Magnifico! And here we have it, folks. We were leafing on a sunny afternoon in the summertime. In the summertime. All right, I know. Thank you so much for joining me today to Paint with a Passion. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to painting again together real soon. Let me know what you think, and also let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification button. I wish you all peace, love, and happiness now and always.